Hey everybody, it's Justin from Bittnerville, and today we're going to make a present for my mama. Her birthday is coming up, and I like giving personalized presents. They always go over very well, especially to your mom. Uh, and so what we're going to do today is make my mom a beach motifed uh, wall art uh, to commemorate a trip that we just took together. So we rented a house at the beach for a week, and so we're going to take stuff that we got on that trip and we're going to inlay it into this sign. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a, a sheet of beadboard, beachy, and we're going to use the Creality Falcon 2 to laser cut out uh, different motif items, some words, and then we're going to fill it with epoxy. And when we fill it with epoxy, we're also going to inlay things from the trip. So my kids had found a sand dollar and some seashells, so we're going to add that in there. And encapsulating it in epoxy will make it look really nice and pristine forever, which is nice. And so why don't you help me reaffirm my position as favorite child by making my mom a very memorable and heartfelt gift today on Bittner Bill. I'm going to start by using Lightburn. Uh, this program is great for using with laser engravers and the Falcon 2 from Creality works great with this. And so since I have not permanently placed this Falcon 2 in my shop yet, I have not squared up the bed uh, super well. What I need to do is put a piece of paper down and then have it make this rectangle. And it's only going to make a line and I have it doing it really fast at 6,000 uh, MMS. That way it's only going to take a couple seconds. And what it'll do is it'll draw this rectangle. This rectangle, once it's on that piece of paper, will tell me exactly where to lay my beadboard so that it is square to the machine. Um, and so after I go ahead and do that, I'll be able to turn that layer off and cut out my scene right here. So uh, I have Indian Rocks Beach, and in this program it's so easy. I mean, it's just like text. I can delete and type in however I want and select my fonts. I have it cutting out a circle so that I can put the sand dollar in there. And I used some calipers on that first to make sure that I knew what the size was. And a cool thing in here too is once you know the size, I knew that it was, uh, the sand dollar was like 65 millimeters. So I just went up here and I said, give me a 67 by 67 circle. So it's just a little bit bigger. And so I know my sand dollar will perfectly fit. And then I imported in a free image of a mermaid right here. And uh, so it's gonna cut out this mermaid and then we're gonna fill it with epoxy and sand and a whole bunch of other stuff to make it look cool. So let's go ahead and turn that off, but turn on my little rectangle. Let's go ahead and engrave it so that we see it on my paper and then we'll cut out the actual sign. I've placed a piece of craft paper in the machine. Uh, I really, even if the laser engraves outside of this, it's fine. What I want to know is where the corner of the unit is um, and in what direction the two lines are going. That way I can lay down my piece of beadboard on top of that and it will be square. So first we're going to turn everything on, I guess. There we go. It will home. Very good. And then I hit print. You can see that it barely made any little line there, which is fine. Hopefully it's not going to wipe the paper. And it didn't. Yay. Okay, good. All right. <laughs> so holding the paper, I'm moving it back. And you can see this line. It's very faint. I'm not even sure you can see it on the camera, but here, I'll zoom in. See that line right here? So it just faintly put something on this piece of paper. So now I can just lay my beadboard down and match it up to this corner. And then I know that my beadboard is square for the next engraving. I wanted to show you something cool about this bed that Creality supplied with this Falcon 2 for me. Um, you can use rare earth neodymium magnets to hold your materials down because uh, it's a steel bed underneath, and so it's uh, magnetic. And so if you look over at this corner, this beadboard is actually up a little bit, and that is the enemy of any laser engraver. So what I'm able to do is take this magnet, place it there, and now it's held down tight to the bottom. Obviously, I have to make sure that it's not um, going to get hit by the laser, but in a very, you know, 
good way as well. If the laser knocks into it, it will move it. It's not like a solid hold down that I would use in like my CNC machine, for example. So it's not the end of the world if the magnet gets pushed out of the way, um, but hopefully I moved it into a spot where it's not gonna get hit. I mean, engraving is all complete and the Falcon 2 did a really good job. Um, I don't have any char on the back. Um, you know, I do have some marks just from me touching this, but we're gonna handle that in a few minutes. Now on all the words that are up at the top, some of the letters do have small interior pieces uh, that I'm going to need to reattach and that's why I'm holding on to them right now. When I bought this sheet of beadboard, it is a pretty decent sized sheet for $8. So what I'm gonna do is I'm flipping this over and I'm going to glue it to the back. And the reason why I need to do that is because in order for me to pour epoxy into here, it uh, obviously has to have something to be put on. Uh, also, when I take apart these pieces, I'll be able to super glue them inside here until the epoxy goes in holding them in place. The glue has set, there are no gaps in between anything. I'm glad I put a lot of pressure on top of this. So just kind of squeeze it all down. Now what I've done is I've taken some small pieces of molding and I've cut them with 45 degree angles at the corners. I'm gonna go ahead and glue these on now. I think it gives it a lot more of a finished look. For this trim piece, I'm doing a mixture of wood glue and super glue with activator. That's why I'm making these big gaps in with the glue. This is a decorational piece, so I'm not worried about, you know, structure. But by doing the mix of these, the super glue is going to instantly dry, holding it in place. After we add the activator to the glue area. All right, only one chance though when you do it this way. So you gotta make it perfect. Okay, it's all there. Just gonna make sure we clean up any squeeze out. We're gonna do that all the way around. Next, before we go ahead and start painting this, we need to attach all the little pieces of the letters that uh, or stuck to its piece. So I'm gonna go ahead and tap it out of the back. I like to always go from the back to the front so I don't have a risk damaging the front. And put it like that, okay. So using tweezers, because I don't wanna get super glue all over my fingers, I'm gonna super glue the bottom of this spray the letter spot and put it in here. There we go. Looks pretty good. Okay, so I've mixed up some epoxy. We're gonna go ahead and get started. I always like to work top down, that way I don't get my hands in anything. I'm gonna go ahead and pour a whole bunch of this into my silicone cup. Okay. Put that to the side. And we're going to be putting emerald in the letters. Be surprised how little of these mica flakes you actually need. So I'm probably gonna go with maybe like that much. Popsicle stick. So the big thing here is since I have already painted everything, under no circumstances do I want to get this epoxy anywhere but inside the letters. So I'm gonna be trying my best to make sure that that is the only thing that I'm getting epoxy in. So I've decided to use a syringe. I'm gonna 
wipe it off with a paper towel. Okay, so using a syringe, I'm inserting a whole bunch into the cavity. And I'm gonna just keep going and get as much of this filled as I can. And I'm gonna let it try and settle on its own a little bit, and I will come back with a uh, popsicle stick and kind of move it around, get it to fill it in. I'm not trying to take this all the way to the top on these. I'm just trying to inlay pretty good. Okay, now that I filled in a decent amount with the syringe, I'm gonna suck up the epoxy in the syringe again. But this time I'm going to attach a needle head to the front of it because I've kind of glooped it in there. Now I'm going to try and give me the laser precision I need to finish it up nice. All right, so I have the Indian Rocks Beach name filled in. That was pretty good. I still have my clear epoxy, and so what I'm gonna do next is do the sand dollar that's gonna go in here. And I want to apply this by pouring it directly over top of it, because I want this sand dollar to protrude if, uh, or this sand dollar is gonna protrude. So I wanna make sure that the area that's protruding is still covered over with at least a thin layer of epoxy. I still have some clear epoxy left and what I'm gonna do with that is I'm going to add some sand. And I'm gonna do that for the tail area. Uh, by mixing in sand, it's going to get really, really thick, and it's not really going to want to run outside of where I put it. Let's see if we can get a good shot of that. So I'm mixing some of it in, and I'm going to mix it and then see if I need to add more or not. Most likely have to add a lot more. Yeah, let's add a lot more. I really want it to be more sand than epoxy, if that makes sense. Now I don't want to put too much of the sand in because I don't want it to run. Um, I don't want it to travel this way. I need to make more epoxy for the rest of this right now. But I do plan on insetting some seashells that we found into this. Those will dry in the epoxy and they'll never be able to come out. Okay, next step is that I'm going to be putting some clear epoxy in her tail area, and then I have these blue sapphire uh, chips that I bought. They're only like a dollar, so uh, they look pretty cool. I'm gonna inlay them in there, and they're gonna kinda pretend to be the mermaid scales. I also have to be careful not to put too much epoxy because I'm gonna go with a different color from her waist up. So I'm gonna try and lay it really thin and spread it around. That way I kind of have it under control. Cool. This stuff looks pretty good. Gonna maybe put too many stones right here. Uh, not all of them are going to touch the epoxy and get stuck, uh, but that's fine. And I'm gonna leave it this way uh, until I go to uh, check on it in the morning. And then I'll just shake it and whatever falls off, falls off, you know? Okay, now I still have clear epoxy right here, but what I'm gonna do is now take the rest of my clear epoxy that I've made and I'm gonna add a 
silk blue. And that's going to fill up the entire mermaid. And then where they meet, I will use tweezers, I think, to kind of hand place the rest of the stones. Looking at it right now, I do wish that the sand was like a more brown sand, but it is the sand from the beach we were at. So again, this is kind of a sentimental thing. Also, I can tell that the sand dollar is absorbing the epoxy. Uh, so that's something unexpected, but uh, you know, it is what it is. Okay, so I finished the epoxy. I think it looks pretty good. I'm gonna hit it with the heat gun a couple times. There's also a bubble coming out of here that I'm gonna try and fill with some more epoxy. But overall, I think it looks good. Um, we're gonna let it sit for 24 hours and it should be all done. All right, it's the next day and we are all finished. It is completely dry and I think it looks pretty good. Uh, I am a little disappointed in the sand dollar right here. I didn't realize that it was gonna be so porous. And once you're in this and you're doing it, there's no turning back. So uh, what I should have done was sprayed it with shellac because shellac dries in 20 minutes. Since it's such a fast acting sealant, it would have filled all these pores and stuff so that when I put it in the epoxy, it wouldn't have tinted like this because of you know absorption of the epoxy. But otherwise, this is a pretty easy project. This is definitely the type of thing that you do with a laser engraver. So the Creality Falcon 2 did a very good job at this. I had no char, it cut it out perfectly. It's a keepsake type of thing, but it's a sign. Um, and that's what CNC machines and laser engravers are very good at doing. Uh, signing, making signs, and making engravings on other materials. So uh, thank you again to Creality. They had sent me out this for a different video, but I wanted to use it again for this one because uh, it was the right application. If you had a good time watching this video, if you learned anything, I hope you'll like and subscribe. And of course, stay safe in the shop. I will see you in the next video.